Hello and welcome to my brew day video where I'm brewing a London Porter. For regular viewers of my channel, I know I said the last brew would probably be the last one before my summer holiday, but I managed to find a window of opportunity for this one, so it's all good. For those that aren't familiar with the beer style of Porter, this was an extremely popular style in the 1700s and 1800s. So popular in fact that this caused the London beer flood in October of 1814. One of the huge beer vats ruptured, causing a domino effect, resulting in almost 1.5 million litres of beer flooding out into the streets. Sadly, people died and buildings were destroyed. Don't let this put you off of this fantastic beer style though. Here's a quick look at the recipe. This will be repeated in the YouTube video description. Uh, this recipe is actually based around uh, an 1880s London porter. The original porters were actually mostly brewed using uh, brown malt, which would have created a harsh flavour. So luckily today we have better malt at hand. So my stripe water is now at the desired temperature and I start doing in with my grain. It's essential to add the grain gradually and stir as you go, ensuring that all of the grains are wet. Your end mixture should not be too thick, and it certainly shouldn't be thin either. After this, add your mash plate, ensuring that uh, at first it's actually close to the grain, and then just bring it up a little. This will increase your efficiency. I would also recommend the use of a sink strainer. Uh, this actually helps filter out the pieces of grain that are involved in the initial mash when the waters are much higher. This will give you a far cleaner beer in the end. This beer has just two mash steps. The first one is at 66 degrees C, though if you wanted it to be a little bit sweeter you could go as high as 68 or 69, and then the second step, 10 minutes at 75 for mash out. The grain you see on the top there is the uh, sink strainer doing its job, and as you can see it's a very nice colour this one. So during the mash I've got my sparge water heating ready for the sparge. I've also got my hop additions, my yeast nutrient, and also my Irish moss ready also. A note on that, I intend to use the Irish moss in any beer that isn't totally black, and this one certainly won't be. And I use yeast nutrients in all of my brews. So here's the state of my sink strainer after the mash. As you can see, it collected a fair amount. Very useful. So now it's time to start the sparge. As you can see, I use a jug, and up which I fill with one litre at a time, and I slowly sparge over my grain. It's also vital to do this as evenly as you possibly can. So now we're at the hot break, and it's time to control that using my uh, spray, which is filled with star sand, and also my brewing spoon. As you can see, the spray alone actually controls this from boiling over, so very, very fast and very useful. Once the risk of boil over is settled, then it's time to stir all of that protein which is on top back into the beer until it's nice and clear on top. So now it's time for the first hop addition. I'm going to use a hop spider for this one. There are quite a few hops in this. After adding the hops to the hop spider, it's important that you give them a good stir afterwards. Brewing music wise, today I chose Megadeth, very inspirational for a very good brew. Usually I start my brew in the early morning, but this one was done after work, so uh, really I was getting very hungry, so uh, along came my dinner, which was a lovely uh, fish and rice with a nice sauce and vegetables. I've got a great boil going here as you can see, uh, but there's also protein uh, building up to the top. This also needs to be stirred in as you go during the brew. I took a refractometer reading uh, with about 30 minutes left in the brew and I was already at the brewing target. So this is uh, obviously very positive. So a quick look behind the scenes here and just recently I've uh, converted this old storage room into a beer storage room, far better. As you can see, there are five tier storage racks with plenty of room on top for brewing equipment also. So back to the brew and in goes my Irish moss. And five minutes later, my yeast nutrient. And then the final hop addition. It 
zero minutes I take the hop spider out, being careful to allow all of the wort to flow from it first. After that I do a whirlpool for a few minutes just to let all of the flavours settle in together. It's now time to hook up the counterflow chiller and chill the wort down to the correct temperature for pitching the yeast. Less than 10 minutes later my Blickman through meter shows me that it's now safe to expel the wort into my fermentation vessel and pitch my yeast. As you can see the resulting wort is not black, it's actually a brown which is what's desired by this style of porter. So now I'm splashing this wort into my fermentation vessel, creating as much air uh, to look after the yeast as possible. For this brew I'll be using Safel SO4. So after I've put half of the wort in, I then sprinkle the yeast over this top. I then add the rest of the wort on top of the yeast, uh, ensuring that I hit the yeast with the wort. I have tried rehydrating my yeast before pitching it, but in all honesty, all of my dry yeast seems to start within 4-5 to five hours, and I didn't really have any different result when I used to do rehydration. So now pretty much all of the wort is in my fermentation vessel, and it's now time to lock it up and add my temperature controller and heat belt. So here's a picture of that five hours later and as you can see my oversized airlock definitely has activity and all is good. So I'm happy to say that this was a very successful brew day. Uh, there were no problems, everything went as planned. Uh, having said that, I did actually beat my brew target by five points, but that's not really a big problem. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope some of you out there actually brew this beer. It's very, very nice and tasty. Thanks for watching, and catch you again soon.